Welcome to the playbook presented by Fan Food, a discussion around how leaders are modernizing today's customer experience through technology in sports, entertainment, and hospitality. I'm your host, Rob Cressy. And joining me today is Stacy Moore, founder and commissioner of the American Cornhole League. Stacy, great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me, Rob. I appreciate being here. Can you give a quick overview on who you are and what you do? Sure. Stacy Moore, founder and commissioner of the American Cornhole League. We just wrapped up our fifth world championships, four and a half full seasons. We start our next season September 1st, tomorrow. The 2021 season kicks off for our point standings in our six world championships. A lot of exciting things going on in the world of cornhole, and I'm looking forward to sharing all those details with everybody. Yeah, and right now the time could not be better for you in American Cornhole because strangely during this pandemic, you guys have seen insane growth. I saw that you guys had four hours of live television on ESPN. You had 29 million minutes of Cornhole watched on your digital channels last month. So take us into your mindset a little bit more in terms of the growth during the pandemic and sort of how this unfolded and was this something that you, one, expected and planned for or were you nimble and moving as things were happening? Yeah, definitely unexpected. I don't think anyone expected COVID and what the fallout would be uh, related to that. So it has certainly been a roller coaster year. Um, I was having another conversation with someone that last I talked to back in February so, wow, it's felt like two years. It felt like we talked two years ago. So, um, it has certainly been, been a wild ride. I've been too busy. I can't get a cool background like, like you have. So, I've got this plain wall behind me. I need to find some time to, uh, to decorate my walls so I get up to your speed. But, uh, uh, but yeah, so back in March, uh, we, were, uh, we were in Cleveland, Ohio. We were in 150,000 square feet. We had 180 sets of cornhole boards set up ready to go Thursday night, the city, county, state, pull the plug on us. You know, we had had over a thousand players travel to that event. They were already in Cleveland. So you can imagine the player unrest we had to deal with, uh, just how disappointed everyone was uh, to not be able to play that event. Extremely costly for us. And as a small business, you know, when you're, when you're staring a, a six figure plus loss in, in the face um, in a pandemic, you have no idea what to do. Um, but we were fortunate to quickly pivot. Um, we decided that we were going to be the first live professional U.S. sports back on television. Um, and so we went to the drawing board to figure out social distancing rules uh, so that we could uh, get live cornhole back on, back on ESPN. And we also invested a uh, lot of money on the technology side really quickly to create ACL virtual to allow people to play cornhole competitions in their backyard. So we went down two parallel paths immediately there in March that uh, ended up proving out to be very positive for us. All right, so let's talk about each one. Let's start with the investment of the tech to allow people to play versus each other. I love this from a community mindset side of things because so many of us have cornhole boards at our homes. We've been playing them from college to post-college or just so often it's part of the culture of summer in being outdoors. Yep. And what we love is that connectivity, whether you're playing versus your friends who might not live in the same city or state as you, all the way to creating new relationships. So take us a little bit more into sort of what does the technology look like and why you did it? Yeah. <clears throat> so we had already had a foundation where we had a training tool that we called a deck around. And that's where players throw 10 rounds, four bags per round, and it's a total score. And we base a player's skill level uh, sometimes based on their deck around score. And so our perfect score would be 120 if you throw all four bags in the hole. And so we had that uh, formatted already. Uh, so what we needed to do was figure out how to create a, uh, a competition around it. And so, and, and create brackets and have people submit their videos uh, via Facebook uh, for verification. Because obviously, if you're, if you're scoring your deck around at home off camera, it's very easy to, uh, to cheat on that. 
So we had this Facebook Live requirement uh, that got integrated. We were able to uh, integrate our bracket system and our point system um, fairly quickly with our deck around uh, format. We also added another virtual format that one of our ACL pros had developed, which was called Ghost, Ghost Cornhole, uh, which is really cool. It allows a player to play virtually to 21. So what happens is you set a ghost per round score level. So for example, if you're playing against a ghost six and you score eight points in that round, you're going to net two points. So we had to develop that functionality um, within our, our software and that became a part of our ACL virtual platform so that we could offer players two different uh, types uh, of ways to play competitively play competitively for money. We took entry fees, paid out cash uh, for both of those formats, and we're able to create a bracket competition so that anyone could play no matter where they were located. And what was the response like from the cornhole community? Oh, they've, they, they've loved it. Um, you know, um, they've absolutely loved it. And, and we're just in the early stages with, with the ghost cornhole platform piece. There's all sorts of cool things we can do with that as a training tool. Uh, but we've powered, I believe it's over 500 events uh, on that ACL virtual platform during during COVID, which has been really cool. And I have to imagine this is not something that got put together overnight or in one month. And the tech side of things, like how long ago were you working on this, whether mentally or the actual development of it? Like I said, we you know we had a little bit of a core foundation with the deck around, and the way that our uh, programmers have developed our software, they're able to be pretty nimble to be able to put different components together relatively quickly. So it was a matter of uh, marrying our bracket components and our scoring system with that deck around format, and then uh, programming that uh, ghost scoring system on top of that. Um, but those guys worked uh, probably 24 hours a day for, for a good solid six weeks, you know, to get everything smoothed out and, uh, and going for us. So let's talk about the ESPN side of things, because one of the biggest uh, challenges for so many of us was a lack of live sports during the pandemic. It's so uh, baked into the fabric of who we are in our culture, and there was just nothing on. Until all of a sudden you turn on ESPN and you know, you would hear, whoa, there's cornhole on TV right now. And with nothing else on, you became the number one game in town to the point where you were having four hours of live television on ESPN. So take us into one, how did this happen? Then two, the growth potential to get to four hours where you became the opportunity, you became the league. Yeah, it was was really cool uh, the way it all came together and we were certainly fortunate and appreciative of of ESPN and, and our production team and everyone that that worked together to to make that happen but like I said I, I was convinced that that cornhole is probably one of the best social distancing sports out there um, you know naturally our players are are separated to a degree you know there's no physical contact uh, between them other than some high fives here and there. Um, so it, it, it was, it was pretty, pretty uh, made sense to try to create rules to have players step out of the box, have some bag robbers come up with, with a format that we pitched to uh, ESPN. They ran it all the way up the Disney flagpole, put it up under all kinds of scrutiny. Uh, before we did our first event, we had to get approval from the governor uh, of South Carolina to do the very first one, um, and and we were able able to do that, and that that set us on a path to do seven straight weeks where we had four hours every week on on ESPN, um, and certainly we didn't expect having that kind of exposure coming into the season where you know we were contracted for seven total two hour linear telecasts, and we ended up doing seven four hour linear telecast on ESPN seven weeks in a row. So um, it was a, it, it was a, it was a crazy ride. And, uh, and, and it was, it was, it was a lot of, a lot of fun, a lot of hard work, a lot of stress, but looking back on it, so glad we were able to accomplish it.
So what is this going to do for the growth of the sport? Because I have to imagine this really adds, one, a lot of credibility, two, a lot of visibility, and three, a lot of opportunities for new players and or sponsors for you guys. Yeah, I think it, uh, you know, we had gotten to the point uh, with our sport over the past couple of years where we had, we had kind of gotten past of, okay, this is no longer just a joke that people are making fun of on Twitter. It's like people are actually watching it. We're developing a fan base. Our top pros are starting to develop a fan base. And so we were just on the cusp of that uh, going into this season with what we did uh, in January with the a special event we did called Super Bowl with Sam Darnold and Daniel Jones under our normal format. And we were certainly worried that our, com- that our season was going to be completely wrecked, that we were going to have to abandon our prize pool, have to abandon our broadcast, give our sponsor money back. And so to be able to flip the script on that scenario we were facing and to be able to do these seven weeks, it gave our players a lot more exposure. So we have so many of our pros that had never been on an ESPN broadcast court before now have that experience of being able to play on there and people are being able to see them and get to know them. So uh, it's had a lot of depth to our ACL pro division. Like I said, a lot of new names got on the broadcast. A lot of the, a lot of those guys are getting recognition and recognized, which is awesome. Going to help their ability to sell sponsors. Certainly the additional programming we have provided a ton of upside to our sponsors and we couldn't have done it if Johnsonville didn't step up uh, and invest additional money on top of what they had already committed to us for the season to, um, to make that happen. So they were, they were certainly the leader for us to making sure that, that we could, uh, could do all those broadcasts. And so, you know, it became a win-win for both of us for sure. Let's dig into your fan engagement mindset a little bit, because I think you have a unique perspective because you're running a professional cornhole league, but at the same time, we know the larger mass of people who play this. So you've got this sport, but then you've got the big community here and you've already talked about how you're using technology to embrace the community and help them out there. But what's really your fan engagement mindset as a whole to bring all of that together? Because oftentimes as a fan, it can be hard to relate to the professional league of things. You see them, you're like, Oh, I would love to do that one day, but your ability to continually be there and show up every day so that I, the cornhole casual fan can feel some sort of way about what you guys do. Yeah, I think uh, one of the one of the best things about our sport is that we cross over with all other pers- professional sports in some way. It's it's relatable, right? So whether whether you're playing cornhole at a tailgate, or whether you see the NBA players playing cornhole in the bubble, um, you know whether you see the major league baseball guys out there throwing cornhole and 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 doing trick shots as a part of interacting with us, uh, that fan engagement and fan activation piece. Uh, is massive for us. So, like I said, the crossover, not only with the everyday person that's out there throwing bags in their backyard, but the celebrities that also enjoy throwing it, we're able to bring that together. And so we have, uh, we can provide a lot of positive fan interaction benefits for the NFL, for the NBA, for Major League Baseball, all the other professional sports uh, benefit from, uh, from working with us. And then we certainly love to leverage social media uh, so whether it be doing trick shots, whether it be doing these virtual events, uh, creating all kinds of cool competitions, you know, figuring out how to increase our exposure on TikTok, Snapchat, and all these uh, uh, great social media platforms, we're, we're in the middle of all of it and embracing all of it. Here's what I'm interested in. So you mentioned TikTok and these other platforms that you're embracing. And so often I think one of the challenges for teams, leagues, brands, or companies is they make excuses for why they can't do something. Whereas I see the the growth trajectory of what you're working on. And it seems like a no brainer to say, we want to continue to um, build on our footprint in as many different ways as we can. Let's embrace this technology and this social first and fan first mindset. So what would you say to others who may be skeptical about using or growing into new platforms that they might not necessarily have experience in? Well, you have to do it. You have to figure it out. Um, you know, I'm certainly, 
as my daughter will tell me, I'm, you know, I'm an old guy that doesn't get it, right? So, so I'll ask my daughter, my 18-year-old daughter, questions about what she's doing on Snapchat and, and other things to, to really start to try to understand and, and figure out because I, don't, I personally don't use Snapchat. Um, so uh, I just have to embrace it. I have to educate myself. I have to uh, talk to people that are in the middle of it and, and experts. And so like one of the partnerships that we recently did uh, was with Wave TV. Uh, they put us on two episodes of Oddballs. Um, and I believe that generated 24 million impressions for our brand through Wave TV and, and the Oddballs content. Uh, through that partnership. So uh, pretty amazing, <laughs> pretty amazing what, what's going on in that realm. And so if you, uh, if you're a sports league out there and you're not in it, you better get in it. What I really liked about what you said is that you're self-aware enough to know that even though I don't do it, it doesn't mean that we don't do it. That, hey, if I don't understand it, let me find someone who does, does understand it so that we can leverage it because so often I think that becomes the missed opportunity. We don't have to understand everything as a leader of an organization, but you want to find a team of experts and people who can say, hey, what can we do to be forward thinking and to put ourselves in the best position to succeed? And oh, by the way, you know who this is really for? Your fans, your audience, they deserve this. They deserve you being the best version of yourself when it comes to social, even if you yourself are not on every platform. Yeah, yeah, certainly. And, and we are in the early stages of, of growing our sport as a professional sport with that, with that fan base and building our fan base and building that, that player loyalty for our ACL pros so that they can build their own brands of value. And, uh, you know, while they might not ever reach the LeBron James status of, uh, you know, having that large of a fan base, we certainly want to give them every opportunity um, for, for them to build a, a large following and, and their own brands as well. Well, yeah. And when it comes to player loyalty, the good thing is someone's going to meet some of your players and it's actually going to mean more because it's more relatable. You see LeBron James and it's, it's like seeing Bigfoot or something. It's like, I can't believe I just saw LeBron James. Like I actually saw, I saw LeBron James once I was eating dinner uh, in Chicago at this restaurant called RPM Italian. And all of a sudden the, the Cavs were in town playing the Bulls and in walks LeBron James and Tristan Thompson. And you literally stop mid eating and you say, holy crap, that is a LeBron James who just right. walked through here. And it's a surreal moment, but it's not as relatable where someone's going to meet one of your professional players and be like, wait a second, I drink beer like that guy might do. I play cornhole just like he might. Wait a second, we might be friends one day. And there's something beautiful about that because I actually believe that's what helps build fan bases is the relatability. Yeah, and I think a lot of that, you know, we've been compared, you know, to the early stages of NASCAR sometimes to have that kind of relate, relatability, how NASCAR drivers uh, had that had that level of interaction with, with their fans. Um, you know, it's certainly great for us when someone like Johnsonville takes the Big Taste Grill out on the road, invites uh, some of our ACL pros to become and be a part of a festival or a retail activation or an activation at an SEC tailgate party, right? And, and our pros are sitting there throwing bags with, with everyone else. And they have a chance to compete against them. They have a chance to learn from them. They have a chance to get to know them. Um, and so I love seeing that interaction. And I also love seeing the interaction that our ACL pros have with other celebrities because cornhole is a sport that will humanize another celebrity's ego faster than anything. And so – like when uh, Terrell Owens was, was running his mouth about how he was going to beat Cody Henderson and Cody Henderson beat him 21-0, I think seven times in a row. Um, you know, those, those are uh, really enjoyable sights to see. And the fans enjoyed watching it too, that, that saw that kind of thing uh, go down in an impromptu moment. Um, so that's definitely one of, the, one of the cool things about our sport and our pros um, right now. They're, they're eager to, to – interact with people. They're eager to build their fan base. We are starting to see, you know, a lot of them are signing autographs. 
We just did a deal with Tops. We rolled out uh, Tops cards around our World Championships uh, for the first time ever. So, uh, so we're just just continuing to to grow in that way. So let's look forward now. So right now you're definitely in an awesome period of growth and we want to make sure that we keep that going. So take us into your growth mindset a little bit right now, because we know we can't rest on our laurels because you never know what's going to happen where all of a sudden an event gets canceled or who knows what. So what are you doing to continue this growth moving forward? Yeah. So certainly going into next year, we want to do more guaranteed linear airings with, uh, with linear networks. And uh, so that's certainly one of our goals. We're actually going to be rolling out another series. So we'll have the ACL Pro Shootout Series in addition to the ACL Pro World Championships uh, going on here next season, uh, which we're excited about. It should give us, I believe that'll be close to 20 original um, original events that we're going to be doing next year on, on linear television. So uh, that's really exciting to, to see that growth. And, uh, and hopefully with that will come a lot more sponsor activations and, and integrations as we develop on the pro side. On the college side, we have some, um, some big plans as, as well. We're working, on, we're working on a major partnership on, on the college integration front to build out our National College Cornhole Championship platform, which happens – over New Year's here this year in Myrtle Beach. Uh, so we're excited for that. And we're looking to build cornhole out uh, at the high school level. So high school competitions, we're doing the first ever national high school cornhole championship around our college event over New Year's here this year. And, uh, and we'll probably pop up some special events between now and the end of the year because there is some time to fill. So, uh, you know, just because we're not uh, – we're, we're not going to wait till January when we typically roll out our, our pro competitions. We're going we're gonna to start doing some things here early. In fact, we're doing ACL pros versus Joes in, out in Galveston, Texas in two weeks. So uh, that'll be a special digital broadcast that's coming up. Awesome. I love it. Is there a way to create a handicap type system where the pros could play versus the Joes? Because like you said, uh, one of the pros played versus Terrell Owens and just absolutely smoked him. And it's no different yeah. than in, in golf. If I'm going to play against a professional golfer, he's going to destroy me. But it doesn't yeah. mean that there isn't a way to say, all right, I'm getting 20 strokes taken on this person. Is that something that is part of your world? Yeah, so we certainly see side games will go on where, where people will spot points. Um, here and there, and depending on the level of competition or the, or the difference in skill level, sometimes that point spotting or setting a spread on a game uh, can work out to make it competitive. But in most cases, like any ACL pro that spots me 20 points, they're going to beat me 21-20. Um, you know, I just I don't stand a chance against them. So handicapping me in, in that way is, is not going not gonna to do any good. But what we, what we do use is we use our virtual events like the deck around I mentioned to be able to put people uh, in, in similar skill levels. So we have five different skill levels within the ACL. So if you're a beginner, you can compete against other beginners. You know, if you're an inter intermediate player, competitive player, or advanced player, we have tiered competitions based on skill level that we do both in person and virtually. And so for the ACL pros and Joes, we're actually – a Joe is going to play in a in an entry tournament with an opportunity to be matched up with an ACL pro, and that pro is going to be playing on behalf of that Joe. The pros aren't going to take any prize money in this event. All the prize money is going to the Joes. So, uh, so it's a really cool opportunity for non-pros to play, have a chance to be on an ACL digital broadcast and win some money. Yeah, and I, I like it because now I can sort of see you could put a pro and a Joe on a team together and just have the pros play versus the pros and the Joes versus the Joes, and then that would sort of even it out. Yep, that's definitely what we do, and that's what we do. That's what we did at the Super Bowl with Sam Darnold and Daniel Jones. Sam and Daniel threw against each other while our two pros threw against each other, and so they were able to have, you know, the, the Battle of New York uh, with that, with our ACL pros, which was which was a lot of fun and, and pretty cool, but but we certainly love doing those kind of special events in those formats, uh, whether it be for charity, whether it be for fan entertainment, whether it be activation around a large sporting event like Super Bowl around the Super Bowl, uh, 
all really cool stuff, all great ways to leverage uh, our sport. Stacy, I love so many things about what you guys are doing, the growth that you're seeing, the way you think about engaging fans, and the way that you're using technology because you are doing things correctly. And for me, that is extremely refreshing to see, and I'm very uh, proud of you and the growth that you guys are having. Where can everybody connect with you? You can visit us at iplayacl.com. Uh, we're out there on all the social media channels as well. And as always, I would love to hear from you about this episode. Do you play cornhole? If so, on a scale of 0 to 100, how good are you? You can hit up FanFood on Twitter at FanFood On Demand, on Instagram at FanFood App, or on LinkedIn. And as always, you can hit me up on all social media platforms at Rob Cressy. Mm -hmm.